All right, what's up everybody? I know I said I wasn't gonna vlog on the main channel, but I uh, just got this A7C and I wanna test out the gyro stabilization. So this whole video, the internal in-body stabilization that's in, in you know, the IBIS is turned off and uh, we're shooting a little bit higher shutter speed. So we're in 500th of a second now. Uh, I'm gonna keep telling you what I'm using. So 500th of a second, I'm gonna stabilize this whole clip. And at the end of the video, if you wanna see it side by side, I'm gonna put the video again. So this will be more of a technical test. If you guys wanna see all the vlog content we've been making, it's on the other channel, so link down below. So it's gonna be a very short one, but I wanna test out the, the gyro stabilization. This takes a lot of time to stabilize, so please like, subscribe, and support me. I was not doing it again. All right, so I just wanna explain how, how and why gyro works. So gyro is inside the A7C, and when the camera moves, so say you're running and the camera goes up, down, up, down, the gyro knows the camera went up, down, up, down, and then in the stabilization app, it's compensating for it. So um, the more it moves, so it goes big like this, it's gonna have to crop more to fix that, okay? So if you see the percentages at the bottom of the screen, so it will say like 2% crop or 8% crop or 12, that's the, that's the percentage I chose. When you put it through the Catalyst Browse software, I'll show you on screen now, it, it'll choose a random number. So if you moved like to the floor, back up, spun the camera around, it's very confusing, it's gonna try to go 100%. So you click on manual, and then you put it on like, like two to 12. I found like 2% is fine, 8% is fine, 10 is probably the most I would do. It's obviously cropping the image and then it's exporting. It's obviously upscaling it a bit when it exports. Now for, for gyro to work the best, you need to turn off IBIS and you need to use a high shutter speed. So normally when you shoot 24 frames a second, you would use 50th of a second shutter speed. And that gives you like natural motion blur, like what you can see here. Um, now the problem is if the camera is trying to stabilize frames, if, they, if your camera is moving up, down quick, it's going to be a blurry frame, blurry frame, right? So if I pause this, this right now, if I do this and I pause it, so this screen grab, you can see that my fingers are blurry. Now, if it tries to stabilize the blurry, it's just going to be stable blur. It, it just doesn't work as well. So you want to use a higher shutter speed so each frame that it's recording is sharper. Um, so I found that even at 100 is fine. And even at 50, it does pretty well if you're moving smoothly. So if you're actually trying to be smooth and you're trying to get a cinematic shot, when you gyro that, it looks pretty good. But if you're just, like this was very casual, I was just vlogging and my hands shaking and I'm walking. So it doesn't work as well. So I used high shutter speeds in this video, but also not as high as I suggest. Most people say you must try to use one one thousand of a second. It's a bit much for me. So I was around 200 to like 500 and I was playing around that area. And then you turn IBIS off because IBIS, it's almost like the camera is internally trying to stabilize the sensor and now you're going up down so the sensor's compensating but then when you take it into the editing software it's going to go okay let me fix this up down movement but the camera's already done that when you recorded it in ibis so now it's trying to fix something that was corrected by ibis and it's going to uncorrect it while you're editing so that's a bit of a problem unless you were being stable then it's not a big deal so for me this is a great thing but it's also something i probably won't use a lot because i'm going to uh, keep IBIS on and I'm gonna shoot at 50th of a second because that's how I'm, I'm trying to film everything. But this kind of was just a technical test. Some people want to know how it works. And then I thought, let me do a vlog situation. I will stabilize the whole thing and then see what you guys think. It looks really cool. Spoiler alert, it looks really cool. It looks really smooth. And uh, if you wanna see the whole vlog, maybe not the whole vlog, I'll put bits of the vlog at the end side by side so you can see how much it actually fixed. There's a bunch of pros and cons to this for me. And there's one thing that I really want but I think I'll, tell, I'll, I'll jump onto this at the end of the video. For now, just enjoy the rest of the vlog. Please like and subscribe and, and do that all right now while you're watching the video. It supports the channel a lot. I'll see you guys after the video for my pros and cons, so enjoy. It's like I'm falling off a tree stump down, down, reaching. It gets so cold. This is not my season. I get so bold when it's not even. I go so hard, feel like everybody leaving. Everybody gone. Song and hearing past my weapon. That's my section. Yeah, that's all I'm knowing. People 
say I'm wavy. I guess that's why I be flowing. See, I was raised around the old. All right, so now, hey. Michelle gets annoyed with me because she can't go out in her PJs anymore because Rob might film her. She, she needs to look after it. Um, anyway, so now the, we're going to do a... Uh, what would you call it? Alright, so we're going to do an unnecessary B-roll sequence of some coffee and then some food and then I'll chat to you guys later. Um, I'm going to do this uh, all on different shutter speeds so you can see them all. They overdid mine a bit. Also, before I carry on, you can, from what I can tell, is you can do gyro in 60 frames a second, but you can't do it in 120 frames a second, it's not available. Maybe it will be in a future patch or something. But right now, you can only do gyro in 24 or 60. So if you're in 4K, you can only do 24, and if you're in 1080p, you can do 60. But this is all, this whole video is 24. inside as well. So the idea behind uh, gyro stabilization is it's, it's taking the data from inside the camera, how, how the camera moved, and then stabilizing it. So um, if you move up, down, left, right, it stabilizes with what it knows. And then I'm not cropping in a lot. I'm cropping in like 10% like maybe. Um, obviously a gimbal is still going to be better, but I thought we'll do this test. If you guys want a more in-depth one, um, let me know. I am going to shoot... A, like a dance video with this without a gimbal and just see see how it like works as a work tool other than that i hope you guys enjoyed the video uh let me know what else you want me to do on this a7c and if you just want to watch some random vlogs where i film it with the a7c link down below to my vlog channel anyway i'll see you guys there all right so that was the video uh you can obviously see how smooth it was if you wait till after this talking scene or if you want to skip ahead you'll see the side by side and how much it actually corrected it corrected quite a lot and i was only doing like five to like 12% crops. If you if you put it on like 25% crop, it's gonna be way more. So check that out right after this and then leave me a comment, let me know what you think. Uh, do you have A7C, have you tried this? And have you uh, got an A7S 3 I think that's got gyro as well. Have you tried it? Let me know what your thoughts are. Do you like it? Are you gonna use it? Aren't you not gonna use it? I think I still need my gimbal. Um, I would love to get rid of the gimbal, but um, still gonna need it for like work stuff. All right, the main pro is it works really well. Like it works super well. It, it just looks pretty when you do it. The, and then the other pro is it's free. So the Catalyst Browse software is free and it's coming with your camera, it's free. Um, so there's no reason not to use it, but there is a few cons that, that puts me off from why I probably won't use it a lot. The main thing that is annoying is Catalyst Browse uh, is very slow. So obviously stabilizing is slow and I understand that that process of uh, stabilizing your clip and exporting it and saving a new 4k file it's going to take time now the problem i have with it is you can't batch it so i can't go through like all the videos choose the cropping factor and export and then leave or do it overnight i gotta like sit do one wait for it to end 
do another one, wait for it to end. It's very time consuming, so this took quite a while. All right, and then the second problem I have is the software tends to crash. It's almost like I can do three clips, and then on the fourth clip it errors every single time. And I've got to close the app, come back in, and then start again there, and then do the next four clips. Then I've got to close the app, come back in, it like crashes, it says, it says there's an error. It's almost like the cache from the program is trying to remember the last few clip stabilization that I did, and it doesn't want to put in new information. So that's a bit annoying that I have to keep closing the app, opening the app. It's just that it's slow. So that's the main thing here, it's, it's, it's very slow. And then the last con is that this doesn't work in 120 frames a second. It only works in 4K24, it works in 1080p 60, and then obviously lower than that. But 1080p 120, which is when I would shoot a high frame rate, um, for slow-mo, doesn't work. So if I want to get some slow-mo B-roll shots of running off to a dance or something, doesn't work. When you go into Catalyst Browse, you'll see a little icon that, that basically means there's gyro data available for you to, to stabilize. So that's not available in 120. I did try. Uh, 60 works, so you can still get half-speed slow-mo stabilized, which is great, but then I might as well just shoot 24 and do some optical flow stuff to slow it down. And then I have one thing which is a want from my side, is I want uh, the, the Catalyst Browse to be integrated into your editing program. So if there was like a plugin you could download to go to DaVinci, which is what I use, or Premiere Pro, and then while you're editing, you can go, this clip needs to be stabilized and you can do it in the app, boom. That would be amazing. So I think as cameras all start getting gyro inside their, inside their systems, this will become a thing in the editing program. But for now, you have to do it in the one, export it out, put it in the other one. So I basically exported the whole thing out put them side by side, and I'm cutting the vlog, and then at the end I'm gonna put them side by side again so it's exactly the same clips. So it's a bit of a schlep, but it works really well, but I think I'm talking way too much right now. So thanks again for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you're enjoying the more like tutorial-based content on this channel. If you guys have already gone to my vlog channel, thank you so much. You'll see the vlog content is there where it's more casual and we're just doing vlog things. And then I have an editing channel where I'm doing all my retouching, it's still new. But please go down. Down below, there's some links down there. If you want to buy this camera, this lens is a 35. I shot a lot of that on the 24. And if you want to buy any of the gear, links down below support the channel. South Africa, there's a link for you. And then everybody else uses the Amazon links. It all supports me. Uh, big thank you. If you want to try Luminar or Squarespace, I have links down below. And yeah, thanks again for watching. If you want to see the side-by-side -side vlog stuff now, it's going to come up right after this. And then I will see you guys on the next video. There's quite a few stuff already filmed. And I'll see you guys there. Peace. All right, so now, hey. Also, before I carry on, you can, from what I can tell, is you can do gyro in 60 frames a second, but you can't do it in 120 frames a second. This way. Thank you. They look very nice for TV. So the idea behind uh, gyro stabilization is it's it's taking the data from inside the camera, how how the camera moved, and then stabilizing it. So um, if you move up, down, left, right, it stabilizes with what it knows. And then I'm not cropping in a lot. I'm cropping in like like 10% maybe. Um, obviously, a gimbal is still going to be better. But I thought we'll do this test. If you guys want a more in-depth one, um, let me know. I am going to shoot a, like a dance video with this without a gimbal and just see see how it like works as a work tool. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, let me know what else you want me to do on this A7C. And if you just want to watch some random vlogs, where I film it with the A7C. Link down below to my vlog channel. Anyway, I'll see you guys there.